program shows that we're not giving up on our own and we have to take care of our own community. Um, I think that this program sends out a strong message across the board that it's not always a case of what we see on TV. You know, yeah, there's a percentage that we really have got to wrap our arms around and try to work them through some trials. But for the most part, there are young men out here like DeMarco that no one talks about. And it's positive what he's doing. This is a profound statement to see these young brothers ready to step up and pay it forward because that's our message. I'm paying it forward because I stood on someone's shoulder and that's what I anticipate and expect of them. You know, our mantra needs to be, we refuse to accept mediocrity. <laughs> now, I just want to uh, congratulate us all just for making it this far, you know, um, and, and, and thank you to all the mentors and just, uh, just like you said, and sisters and, and Miss Willis, you know, and um, everybody just taking y'all time out of the day to come see us, support us, give us something to look forward to. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people ain't never, you know what I'm saying, dressed up like this. A lot of people ain't never got the opportunity to, to go forward, stuff like this. And so just to showing them that it's always a way out, showing us it's always a way out, you know, it's just, it's, it's uplifting. Um, it's, it's such a blessing. And a lot of people, I'm just grateful for it, and I appreciate it. And uh, that's all I got to say. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. You know what? I have the distinct pleasure of standing in front of all of you all because 45 years ago, I graduated from this school. Class of 1975. But mentees, there's one thing you all got to understand. We as mentors, we know one thing. There's no free lunches. After all of this, you all are commissioned to do the same thing years from now to give back, to reach back, pull forward. One question I wanna ask you guys, who wants to be an everyday millionaire? Who wants to be a millionaire 20 years from now? And how do you get there? Huh? Hard work, Hard work and what else? Dedication. What else? What else? Huh? A plan, a financial plan. I'm gonna leave you all with a couple things that a lot of people don't tell you about. One thing for sure is that you're going to have down times in your life. And as uh, Bruce Wayne's father told him, if you remember the scene in Batman, it's not about how you fall, it's about how you get up. So think about that as you go through life, because you're going to have trials and tribulations. It's going to happen to all of us. And I think all of us, especially those with gray hair and no hair, we can tell you that. Life ain't, life ain't been a smooth roller coaster. So. There's a growing phenomenon, I'm gonna share this with you because I'm really excited about it. There's a growing phenomenon that's happening across the country, that there are people that are becoming quiet millionaires. And you know what quiet millionaires are? Those are people that have, <coughs> number one, live within their means. Live within their means, and they've stayed out of debt, nothing more than their mortgage. Then after that, they invested wisely in the stock market. And then you know what else they did? After they became a quiet millionaire, they gave their money and their time overly generous. They gave back. The watches that you have today, they didn't come from a foundation. They came from members of our organization that went into their pockets and said, this is a good thing. I want to support these young brothers. So you all think about all of that. And you, and you know what, fellas? You can do it. There, there, ain't not, there ain't nothing. There's been plenty of people that have become quiet millionaires. So think about it. Take your time. And that's why all these gentlemen are here today. Ask us questions. Don't let us lecture to you, but ask us questions. God bless you all, and thank you for your time. I'm Zeke Preston, uh, Reverend Preston, uh, retired Navy chaplain, Vietnam veteran. I want to say all the young men, you all look good. Uh, like my dad told me, you never get a second chance at a first impression. And you guys definitely got the first impression look already going. I'm just going to say a couple of things, and, and then I'm gone. Not to read this whole thing, but <clears throat> I want to say instead of looking at what you don't have, I want you to look at the opportunities in life waiting ahead of you because in life things can be a lot worse than what you see for yourself right now. 
by looking at the big picture of life, you can have the opportunities to be whatever you want to become in life. There are many roles in life you can take. You should start thinking about them while you are completing your last months in school right now. Here are some examples of some career choices you can make just to think about. Post office, policemen, firemen, mechanics, pipe fitters, military like me. In closing, I want to say this. Be empowerment pledge, I'm reading. I pledge to always maintain a positive attitude. I pledge to make good, sound decisions. I pledge to be serious about my education. I pledge to be focused on achieving excellence. I pledge to be diligent in my efforts. I pledge to be disciplined in my actions. I pledge to be relentless in all my life and never have setbacks that are going to keep me back. Thank you. Well, good morning to each and every one of you. Let me introduce myself. My name is Zaki Baruti, and I'm just here to salute the young men. Give yourselves a round of applause first and foremost. You have now on the stage of embarking in terms of a journey of life. And in that journey of life, some of the keys that I'd like for you to hold on to. First of all, for longevity of life and being blessed, you should always honor thy mother and thy father, first and foremost. Secondly, you ought to, in, within accepting knowledge within your mind with the goal that you'll be a great father, a great grandfather, and that you will also be a asset to our community. God got you here for a purpose, and you have to understand your purpose. And your purpose is to be your brothers and sisters keepers. But to do that, you have to absorb the kind of information. There's two types of information that comes to us. Mad information and good information. You should embark upon reading as much as you possibly can and know our history. As well as, as you age, and this is from experience, travel, get outside of the country. God has blessed me with uh, seeing at least 35 countries. I challenge you as young leaders for the future, double that number that I've been to, as well as one last thing. Always remember God is a good God. And as someone has said before, you will have challenges in life. There's an old saying out of the Holy Quran that says, for those who say that they believe, do you not know that you will be challenged? And we all have our challenges. And as some of us are balding and some get gray, <laughs> we can truly say that we are here because God has blessed us. And obviously, we have done the right things. So make sure that you respect your elders and listen for wisdom. On that note, God will bless each and every one of you because you are pioneers and you're future leaders for our community. And there among you are the bankers, the owners of supermarkets, chemists, engineers, doctors. Think great thoughts. God bless each and every one of you. Hey, um, my name is Jerome Harris, and I've had the privilege uh, to walk with a lot of you uh, on your journey so far. A lot of times people come and they speak and they talk about where you are and they talk about the end of your destiny, being what you aspire or want to be. But we never talk about how do, how do we get there? How do we avoid the traps of, 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 of distractions and, and things of that nature, that, that journey? One thing I want to kind of share with you is because I'm not 
as old as a lot of, a lot of the guys that come to speak. <laughs> mature. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a good one. That's a good one. Uh, not as mature uh, and not as bald. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm getting there. I'm, I'm getting there. Um, but one of the things, you know, I've had people like these guys come into my life because I wasn't as fortunate uh, to have my father in my life to kind of lead me and give me some of that wisdom that I was able to attain from a lot of my mentors. And so what I'll share with you is something that I've learned so far. In the scriptures, it talked about a man named Peter who was in a boat with a lot of other guys. And they saw what seemed to be a, a ghost-like figure walking on water. And Peter, Peter said, if it be you, Lord, bid me to come out and walk on the water. The figure said, come, period. Peter stepped out of the boat, walked on water, and he walked to Jesus. One of the things that I kind of um, extract from that story is that Peter was the only one that stepped out of that boat. And a lot of you guys, all of you guys are graduating, and sometimes it's going to feel like you stepped out by yourself. You're going to feel like you're, you're alone. I felt like that when I graduated and went off to college. I felt alone. Some of you are going to dorm rooms. Some of you are going, you know, wherever you're going. Sometimes you're going to feel by yourself, but you're not. On the road to your des destiny, on the road to to whatever that is, remember that you are never alone. You're not by yourself. You have people rooting for you. You have people cheering for you. You have, you have people hoping you to, to, to get to that place that God has designed and prepared for you. The second thing in that story that, that I extract is that Peter, on his way to the destination of what he saw for himself, he got distracted. There were winds. There were waves that kind of knocked him off balance. And from that, he began to sink. Distractions will come. Temptations will come. Temptation isn't tempting, isn't temptation unless it's tempting. And so you will be uh, faced with some, some temptations. That's okay. Because even when you feel like you're sinking, because God has purpose on your life, because God has a destiny for you, ultimately, you will get back to that place to where you was meant to stand. Having done all to stand in your college, in, in, in a dorm room, in a classroom, when you feel like you're about to flunk out, don't give up, don't throw in a towel, don't call it quits, stand, persevere, and endure. All right, um, this is my first time doing this program, and I can say highly impressed, okay? Today is my birthday, and appreciate it, appreciate it. And when Ms. Rhea said, hey, you know, look at them, you know, when we had to do our thing, say, look at them as your own son. I got five sons already, and I just adopted a room full. You know, I'm shaking hands because some going to the NFL. Some gonna do great things, and I need to know you now. Because when you get big, and I'm at the back door trying to get in, don't brag brand new, I'm saying I put you in your first suit <laughs> for some of you. But being a police officer, we felt like we needed to bridge the gap. And we have a gap between our young men and our police officers out here today, okay? And I tell a lot of people when I meet them on the street, I grew up on Cook and Whittier. It's around the corner, see? See, some folks drop their head, some folks shake their head. But yeah, I grew up on the 4200 block of Cook and Whittier. And when, I just, when myself and my partner decided to come in uniform, because we wanted to kind of do something different. We don't always want to see like we're putting handcuffs on young men, but we're putting suits on young men. We're putting ties on young men. So we're changing, you know. We wanted to change the narrative, and we're starting today. So next year, I'm going to try to bring at least five to ten police officers. You see, I'm a supervisor, so I can make them come. You know, they don't have a choice. You know, so we can flood the room, so we can almost put two police officers with every young man. Because usually when we encounter our young black males on the street sometimes, it's always two police officers. 
So why not put two police officers on each black male as a mentor? And like I said, we're gonna try to change the narrative and start putting ties and suits on our young men instead of handcuffs. And you guys are our voice. Because again, we know once you step out the doors, you're stepping back to your world, and that's okay. But know that on this side of the fence, you got somebody. Because my man Arnold, he got me. I'm with him. All the way through college, I'm with him. And any, anybody else, I'm riding with you. As long as you're doing right, I got you. Like they said, you're going to trip and fall, but look up and see who reaching down. Look and see who reaching down to pull you up. Don't let that first mistake be your last mistake. Guys, I got to tell you, this is a, this is a humbling, a very uh, touching experience for me. I know what it's like to raise a black man. My son is a former St. Louis County police officer, a task force officer, a DEA agent. He's 6'7". And I always knew he was going to be a big kid, so while he was young, I made sure I took advantage of it to put my blows in <laughs> so that when he got to be a big kid, no, we're, we're good friends. Because I respect him. He took the advice that I gave him because I gave him advice from life experience. A lot of times, I know you guys say, man, here come those old guys preaching to us again. But I'm here because of an old guy preaching to me. I can remember riding these streets out here when I was younger, and a kid once tried to take my bicycle, and the only reason I wouldn't let him have it is because I was worried about the impact it would have on me when I got home with my father. Because I got to tell you, you guys think a lot of what you see is brand new. Every brother in here has gone through it and survived it and made choices. Because the one thing I want to leave with you is there's no truer statement than you are the sum of your choices. What you choose, the decisions you make, will last for a long time. You can make that road as smooth as you want it to be, or you can make it bumpy. And I guarantee you, as my friend Barack <laughs> Zaki was saying, there will be challenges. There will be adversity. How will you get up and dust yourself off and handle it? That's going to be the true test. We all can handle good times. But what, what will you do when trouble is looking you in the face and you have to make a decision on how to recover? And that's the fact of life. But I want to say this, guys. Those suits, I wish you could wear them every day of the week. Because <laughs> I, I got to tell you, man, this is a... This is an awesome view. It's, it's, a it's a profound view, and it shows that you truly did come from kings because you look like the kings that you really are. So let's keep this going, all right? Uh, my name is James Treadway. Um, I'm, I'm in the community, and um, I serve uh, the young man here at Sumner High School. Uh, what I want to tell you all today, I don't have a suit on, however, um, you guys look amazing. Uh, what I do want to tell you all is that um, this, that the people who have donated, the people who have put this program together, they put them suits on you to pull something out of you. Uh, the first speaker who got up, he said, you know, when you put the, that suit on, you know, it was something, some esteem came up and you saw how good you look or you saw how strong you was. Well, oftentimes, uh, we, we understand that things happen from the outside to pull something from the inside of us out. And so the suit is nice. The, the, the slacks is nice. The watch is nice. Um, and you look nice. However, it's more about what's on the inside of you. Those suits were put on, on you to show you that there's something that's great on the inside of you. And there's one thing that I figured out about God is that he will oftentimes do something. You know, they say um, you, you can find out what's in something by how you squeeze it. If you want to find out what's on the inside of an orange, just squeeze it. And the juice will come out, the seeds will come out, everything on the inside will come out. And I want you to know that God has blessed you to put this suit on to show you how great you are, to show you how smart you are, to, so, to show you how confident you are. 
But one other thing that I want to share that some of the other speakers shared, um, that life won't always be easy. That you're going to go through some hard times, you're going to go through some struggles, you're going to go through some situation where, you, where you're feeling like you're being squeezed. But I found out, like the psalmist says, that it was good that I was afflicted. Why was it good that I was afflicted? It was good that I was afflicted because it showed me that I had something down on the inside of me that I did not know that, that was there. I did not know that I was a survivor until I was in the middle of a shootout and bullets going past my car and bullets going past my face and God pulled me out of there. I did not know that I could go three and four days without eating and still be okay until I had to go through that. I did not know that I could be a successful young black entrepreneur, a young black father, a minister and a, and a mentor until I came out of the streets of St. Louis and now I'm older. And so now I can say this good that I was afflicted because now I can see how strong I am. I want you to know that your living situation or um, your, you might be part of a broken family, a broken home. You may be um, part of a school system that don't have all the money. But I'm telling you, you're looking at a byproduct. You're looking at someone who's been through it. And I show hard work. I show determination. I show, I show resilience that when I fail, I had to get back up. I want you to know that when God created you and uh, he birthed you, you came in this world without any clothes on. But God put some things, some gifts, some talents, some abilities on the inside of you that you didn't even know that was there. And everything that you will accomplish, everything that you will do, God has placed something on the inside of you to get it done. Great job, fellas. Great job for everyone who put this thing on. All the mentees, all the mentors. Give yourself a round of applause. Thank you. Why should I do a la ilaha illallah, sharik laha tahali wahada? Why should I do it to Muhammad then Rasulullah? What I said, because. That's what I said. I said, I seek refuge in Allah against the enemy of God and man. With the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. I said, God don't have a size. He don't have an image. He don't have a color. He don't have a container. He don't have a beginning or ending. He don't have a circumference or damage or limitation. He don't have a boundary. He don't have a father, a son, a wife, a daughter, a mother. And I bear witness in every prophet from Adam to Muhammad, peace be upon them all. Again, I say assalamu alaikum, that means peace. I'm really happy to be here because I'm leaving from here going to the jail. Most of anybody who knows me know three days a week I'm in the jails. I've been doing this for the last 35 years. And when I look at the brothers here, it's different from where I'm going to go to. I wore black today for a reason. I purposely wore black. I didn't want to put on no suit today. And I started to put on a suit. I said, no, I'm going to come freestyle. Because when we went to Africa, the sister went with me. This is how they dress in Africa. See, it's about your culture also. And I want to have on all black because somebody that told you black ain't where it is. And I'm telling you, that's where it really is. See, without the black woman back there, it wouldn't be nobody on the planet Earth. You're the mother of civilization. Now you can give these sisters a round of applause, for real. <laughs> and if it wasn't for y'all, everybody comes through y'all. Everybody. Ain't nobody don't come through y'all. I don't care who it is, they got to come through you. And that's why we got to learn to love black and understand what. I was raised by a grandmaster teacher the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, who, who taught Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali was Cassius Clay when he met him. Who took Minister Farrakhan, and he's a world leader now. Who took Imam Muhammad. Who took Khalid Muhammad and made men out of him. He didn't make boys, he made men out of him. When I see y'all, y'all just don't understand what you got going good for you. You probably do, but I want to make sure you understand it because Everybody got a problem against you because they know once you figure out who you are, the earth going to quake with you. This brother, me, me just, he helped me, Brother John, because I don't fool with a lot of people. They do a lot of backstab and they play like they don't, but they do. I deal with Brother Zaki Baruti for a lot, but I'm not going to go through all who I deal with. Very few people I deal with because next thing you know, you'll start something and they'll be in front of it. Just keeping it real with you. But me and this brother just went the other day and I just don't do a lot publicly. This is my 197 company that I'd have whooped. And they called a brother and told him to get out of a hotel who was black, but he was homeless. 
and they had sisters scared as hell. They called me. I didn't want nobody else. I couldn't catch Zaki, because Zaki the only other person I really rolled with. Don't play like you nice, neither. Raise your hands, Zaki. <laughs> But I, called, I got John, and we went out there and handled these folks. Now we're in a position to get a black general manager. We're going to bring a black security company on. And I ain't talking about going under the table getting no money after it. That's what a lot of them do. They play like they don't do it. They, they get through doing something, they making side deals. I told him, only him and Zaki, I don't deal with nobody else. Because I don't want no side deal when they sitting dogging us. What I'm telling you is that black history shouldn't be taught in no 28 days. They can't tell your history, brothers. And they don't like black men to talk like this. They want you always buck dancing and buck jumping and butt kissing and butt sniffing and being butt buddy. I don't get down like that. They most time don't never ask me to speak. She's talking about, I'm going to have you speaking during that time they're eating. I told her, I said, you probably need to second guess that because I'm just telling you, I don't, I'm supposed to say anything. I keep it real. These young brothers, tired of people faking it. I deal with police, but very few police. That brother, I trust him. Right there, raise your hand, Sarge. I want you to understand that when we stick together, these white folks can't get it off. They get that off and we don't stand together and be strong. All you gotta do is start loving yourself and loving this black sister. Don't call her no B, no, no tip drill, no, don't call, don't disrespect these sisters. Right. Matter of fact, I want everybody to stand up and give them a black hand. Now stand up and give them a black hand. Everybody stand up and give them a black hand. You know, I think that's really one of the blessings of the whole program and the event today, because one of the objectives is to get people like Anthony, young men like Anthony, not only to prosper and do things, you know, from here and for the next step, but to also to repeat this, to give back to the community, to give back to their school, to make a difference, to reach back and pull forward. Today, I feel like, I don't, I don't know, it feels it feel good, you know what I'm saying? Uh, seeing a lot of our, my classmates in this, and, um, I feel good, you know what I'm saying? First, I wasn't with the suits, I thought it was gonna be too big, that's gonna look, look kind of fat, like a trash bag on me, but then when I put it on, I just, I just feel good, I feel good, I feel, I feel smart, I feel positive, you know what I'm saying? I feel like, you know, like, mm, I feel short, which I would all here to say, I feel short. <laughs> but I can taste my grandma, you know what I'm saying? That's how I feel. Man, it feels great, it feels, it feels wonderful. Um, a lot of people did not, get the opportunity to dress like this on a regular. A lot of people dress uh, certain ways in their own style and um, not realizing that the style that we all do dress in comes out to match each other's, you know? And so sometimes when you dress up like this, it just feels good. It just feels, make you feel wonderful, make you feel great. And I just thank for like all my teachers and Miss Willis for getting us all together. She just came through with it and we all applied. We all just got together and agreed.